podcast celebrating differences. I am your host, Preston, or Ty Tyree, and today I have a chance to talk with Kelly Evans, who is a neighbor and has some had some real issue, interesting problems, but he seems to be working through them really well, and we're going to talk about embracing the differences. Let's go talk with Kelly Evans. How you Kelly, using? how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, sir. Thanks for asking. Appreciate okay. It. So this is uh, my neighbor, Kelly Evans. He lives here in the uh, community in Aldridge 51, and we're sitting in their conference room today, and we'll be talking about life and Kelly. And so let's get started. So it's Kelly Evans, E-V-I-N-S? A-E-V-A-N-S. Okay. I don't know where I got Evans. <laughs> Evans, yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been called Evans before. Yeah. 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 So where were you born, Kelly? I was born in Northern State, Michigan. Okay. I was born in uh, Clear County, Michigan. Okay. Was, uh, How long did you stay there? I was raised there throughout my youth till I was 16 years old. Okay. Uh, came to Texas with my family, mother, stepfather, one of my stepfathers, and uh, it was a uh, pursuit of uh, jobs, housing situations. Did you come to Austin? Uh, no, sir. I came to a town north of here. Uh, many of people in this area, newer people, are not familiar with uh, Brownwood, okay. know, south, just south of uh, Abilene, Texas. Yeah. And um, that is the geographic center of Texas. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Brown, yeah, yeah Brownwood. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. Uh, there's a little community like right next to Brownwood called Bangs, which is the, is it was it per square miles up from the center of each side of the state, Bangs is like the center of the, of the, of the state. Okay. It's called the heart, that's the actual heart of Texas. Yeah, that's an interesting fact. Yeah, <laughs> Texas is a big state. Man, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. serious, yeah. I, I don't travel much. Okay. I don't get around much. I really don't like to travel. I mean, uh, traveling to me has always seemed really kind of scary and more of a, more of a nuisance, more of a, Inconvenience than anything. I, I I worry about get, go, getting somewhere and not be able to make it back, mm -hmm. and not having the resources to make it back. Uh, being on a fixed, limited income, and not always having good, reliable transportation, yeah. and people safe people who feel safe to travel with. I mean, I'm sure anybody could take off and go, and then leave you stranded somewhere. You never know. You know and who yeah. wants to, who wants that? You know. Yeah. So I pretty much am home based. This okay. neighborhood, Mueller, has been my neighborhood for. So how'd you get here from Brownwood? Brownwood, uh, well, it was, that's kind of a tricky of a story because was, I was being transported quite frequently back here to Austin for the mental institution. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I had some mental uh, issues that were very, uh, very disturbing to people that they just didn't didn't take okay. too kindly to. Nothing really. Nothing, just being different, I think. Okay. Different in ways that it's Southern tough. people don't really understand okay. of, a, of, a, of a Yankee and someone that's not from that area coming to this state, coming to that area at a, only age 16. Okay. I, I, they didn't really adjust to me right away. I didn't adjust to them right away. And it's taken me a long time to somewhat, I feel as if I do fit in in, in some ways, and in a lot of ways I don't feel as if mm -hmm. I fit in. I'm doing my best to, to be be polite and, and, and be the person that all the neighbors seem to think that I should be or want to be. Uh, I'm not always sure of myself. I don't think anybody ever is. I'm never sure yeah. of myself. What was the last question about well, the... Well, uh, I was going to get into it. You know, the name of the podcast is Celebrating Differences. Correct. Yeah. So, are you different? Hell yeah, we all are. Mm, correct. We yeah. all We're are all unique, special individuals, yeah. okay? And my vision of this is that I can learn something from everyone. Yeah. You know, you've got a totally different background than I do. Someone tells me to embrace your differences. Yeah. I learned that, and that's something to me that I thought, you know, if you embrace your differences, you really can, it can, it can connect people. It can connect us yeah. in a lot of ways. We're all connected, you know, either whether way that we like it or not, we're connected. I, mean, I don't know what you do for, you know, 
besides ride bikes, and like, I like to enjoy riding bikes. And that's how we kind of give me sure. our connection, but... Uh, uh, no, we were riding tricycles. Tri yeah, <laughs> trikes, yeah, yeah. yeah Schwinn, the Schwinn, the yeah. Schwinn Meridian. And I got mine all tricked out, and you really liked that, and everybody liked that. People would see me, everywhere I went in this neighborhood, people would see me. I kind of may have got a bad reputation. I kind of got to where I was a little bit, uh, I got a little aggressive with behind the wheel. I mean, I, I didn't follow the, the safety rules that you that you enforce that you that you, that you uh, advocate so, high, yeah. so highly for. But I got to where I was just being reckless. I was being a reckless a bit, and uh, I don't know. I was having fun. I was having fun. <laughs> so I want to get back into this embrace differences. Okay. We we do some work with a uh, Qigong master out of China, and. He tells us to embrace those things, like if you've got a little pain in your shoulder, embrace that. Okay. Uh, embrace, the, you know, and I like the idea of embrace your differences, because it's there. You know it's Correct. there. Yeah, definitely It's it not is. going away. Yeah. But if you embrace it and accept it, and then, okay, because I can, after working with him a long time, I can generally make a headache go away. Oh, yeah. Because you just embrace that and say, oh, okay, yeah, it's a headache, but fine. So what do we, and I don't want to make the differences go away, but let's embrace the differences. I love that. Yeah. I think that's really nice. Yeah. 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 So as you're embracing the differences, the question remains for me is like, where are the lightnesses at? I seem to be lacking finding the lightnesses for to connect with someone. Well, how'd you connect with me? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well said, yeah, I agree, well said. It just showed up. It just showed up. It was there, let's embrace that, yeah. yeah. Uh, Are you still riding? My bikes got flat tires and they stole my seat. Remember that episode yeah, I, I told you, you about the bike being stolen? I had to and track it down. Somebody found it for somebody you. Somebody found it for me, yeah, and yeah, and now it's sitting up in a bike room up, uh, in the, up in the closet, okay. and locked up, and I got locks, locked, locks, all kinds of locks on it. Okay. And it actually came in the little room where I had it locked at. They couldn't get it out, so they stole the seat post and the seat off it. Oh, they, it's hard to ride that way. Yeah, there, yeah, <laughs> it is. There's nothing that, and if it ain't nailed down in this little general vicinity, it's it's not gonna they be there. Next time you go to look for it, it's really not. Okay. And, and, I, and, and I, that, that really being the person I am, the personality that I have is kind of like, want to be like a tough, you know, somebody maybe that, but I, I don't take kind to that. I think if yeah. I found somebody that did that to me, I don't think they would like me very well. <laughs> I mean, well, do you, the police. Do you, do you police see it are, as a violation? Yeah, yeah. somewhat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, because, yeah, it just is. It, it feels like a violation, and it, yeah, yeah. So, I can't can't elaborate any more on that. But. So you're in Brownwood, Texas. Mm -hmm. You so came over here. Went to high school there for a year. Went to high school for okay. a couple of years. Actually, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Dropped out. All right. After I dropped out, um, and you know, going back and forth to the mental institution. From there, I had an apartment there, and I was doing okay. I didn't have any steady employment of any kind. Um, you know, I'd been in and out of the mental institution by that point, been uh, in and out of you know, several mental institutions several times. And coming back to Austin, and then they'd, they'd get me to Austin, and they'd say, why are you here again? I'd say, I don't know. They put me out, they put me in the back of the cop car, and they brought me here to y'all. They didn't seem as if they knew what they wanted to do with me. And I didn't know what to do with what to do either. Yeah. I mean, I'm a young man, not not really thinking clearly about anything. Uh, very confused at the time. Had had, you know, had experimented with drugs, but never got hooked on any drugs. Okay. That's one thing I've never been. I've never been really addicted to any drug. Well, I have been addicted to one drug, cigarettes. If you call that that's a drug. You stopped that. And I stopped that, and okay. I, I've been not not smoking now as of right now for 14 years. Oh, that's great. So that's I, I celebrate that every, every day. Oh, yeah. I celebrate that because you know that's a, that's a real feat. Yes. A lot of people can't do that. I, I look around and I'm like, you're smoking? And really, are you smoking? Like, what is that doing? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> but you know, I, I try to like keep my cool about it because you know, that's, everybody makes their own choices, mm -hmm. embrace our differences, right? <laughs> 
But I just, uh, I, I really don't like being around smoke. I can't stand the smell of smoke. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so where were we at with that? Um, I mean, the mineral institution, they brought me back here to Austin and they'd send me back and then send me back to, to Brownwood. I'd be there for a month and some case where we'd come over and they'd say, I don't like this, I don't like that. You won't sign the papers, you won't do this, you're not taking your meds. And they really had nothing against, nothing, nothing, nothing solid against me, but they just had nothing else to do, I guess, or hmm. just they didn't know how to, to, to deal with the type of man I was. They just sent me back to the institution. Wow. Well, I, actually, I got, after I was sitting down after, after several times making that trip, you know, yeah. back and forth down that highway on the bus, we're going up there to Brownwood, coming back in a back of a police car, you know, over and over again, I said, you know what? <laughs> going to Austin, I'm going to stay. Put me anywhere. Put me anywhere. I, said, I, I told the caseworker in Brown, I said, you put me anywhere. Okay. Put me anywhere in Austin. Yeah, just get me out of here. So they, they had this big promise. This, they had this elaborate idea. That we're going to, this is, this, this is, this is, I honestly got true facts. How long ago was this? This is, this Kelly? is 30 years ago. Okay. 30 years ago. They had this great idea that we have a place for you. You're gonna have your own room. There's gonna be room and board. You're gonna be fed. They're gonna give you all the cigarettes you want, and they're just gonna take care of you. And you're just gonna have a great way. You're going to Austin. I, when I got here. I could not believe what I got when I looked what I came into. I came into a big house over here in East Austin, to a big house that had several rooms in it. I went up watching the rooms. This is what you're gonna sleep at. It was a single room bedroom with four bunk beds in it. And that's your bed. That's where you're gonna stay. I thought, are you serious? This is what I gave, I gave up my apartment? Yeah. I brought all my belongings for this? Mm -hmm. I was like, no, no, no. Well, that's where the, the whole story takes a kind of a big, big job turn. Okay. I okay. went homeless for a while. I said, you know what, I can't do, I stay here in Austin. I lived, you know, place to place, person to person, where I could find a place to stay. And and I went. I was going to a take care. Okay. I was going to take care. I got show up at a take care, and I say, you know, I'm homeless. What, what can y'all do for? What am I going to do? Then they asked me. They said, Are you still on drugs? I said, Drugs? I never have been a, a drug addict. Addict. They said, Well, you're taking drugs. They said that you're taking drugs. I said, Yes, I am taking drugs. The ones your doctor <laughs> prescribes me. <laughs> I'm still trying to follow your protocol. What yeah. you want, what you're expecting of me? What do you want from me? What can I do? What can I do to prove that I'm not going to harm anyone? That I that I'm not that I haven't that I haven't hurt no one. I haven't. Yeah, you're not I, you're not violent. I'm not violent. Okay. So, uh, and then they say, oh, well, okay, we're going to get you an apartment. So they found me an apartment right away. Okay. That's been. 30 years ago, about 30 years ago. I stayed in that apartment right here in this neighborhood, right down the street here, where everybody knows where I'm, everybody drives by, everybody drives by, right here where they call it Mueller Place now. Okay. Right here on Berkman. It, was, it used to be called Red Oak. Some of y'all may remember it. I don't mm -hmm. know if you do or you don't. It was there, it was a rundown place. Sewer backed up in, 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 the, in, the, in the apartments over and over. Uh, I lived there for 20 years in that apartment. Wow. I told that woman that got me the apartment, I said, you know what, you get me an apartment, I'm gonna prove to you that I have done nothing, that I will not, I will not go homeless again, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything okay. that is required of me to, to stay, which, what, what you people or society deems me as being a model citizen, uh, you know, not, not having been in jail, not having been a criminal. I was just gonna follow the rules, and I did. Okay. Well, this is what brings us to present time, pretty much. Brings us to present time. You probably want to, may want to loop back at any point, but uh, uh, this brings us to the present time. The present time is now is that about six years ago, when this place was first being built, yeah. coming up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mueller area was coming up, and HEV wasn't there and all that. Well, I lived right down that street. Right right down. I, yeah. I watched this neighborhood come up from ground zero. I come by here, drive by here with a friend of mine that take me shopping. I drive by and I, I watch this place grow up. And uh, as I as I sat there, and uh, someone actually no, so that, that I don't want to say this, I shouldn't say that. 
as I realized, someone gave me a lead that there's going to be an apartment, you know, subsidized okay. housing come up. I was already on federal section eight. They, they got me. They got me into okay. Got me initially got that apartment over there in Berkman. So I said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get over here. I got over here. I get the apartment. I wasn't here but a few months. I met a woman so amazing. She's a retired UT professor. Her name is, if you want the name, I can give you her name. She said, very, she wouldn't mind. Her name is Teresa Costa. She's okay. a retired, retired um, history professor at UT. Okay. She took me into her, her likeness of being, wanting, she was being, wanting to help me. Okay. And I was reluctant because I really didn't want to be bothered by anybody. I wanted like I wanted yeah. to come here and just like stay in, stay on the down low. Like I was there. I was yeah. like just be under the radar. Nobody needs to know about me. Nobody needs to fuss over me. I'm not causing any trouble. Never went back to the mental institution ever again. I haven't been back to the mental institution since that time. Oh so, wow. And I haven't been back. I haven't been back. I, I, That's pretty amazing. I, I sustained my yeah, I guess so. I sustained, sustained myself. I learned how to take my own medication. I learned how to do things myself, pretty much. I had to learn how to start doing things myself. Anyway, this woman, she... Um, what did it take to get a driver's license? I had that since I was 16 years old. Okay. I had that since I was 16 years old. I never gave that up. Okay. You know, I made sure I kept my driver's license. Um, yeah. That's one thing I really knew I had to have. I was going to need throughout In my life. In this world, yes, you have to have a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So that's what got me in my favorite job, having a driver's license, clean driving record, no tickets. I have never been pulled up by the police. Um, yeah, so that yeah, woman, Teresa, she got me in touch with ACC. So I got my GD. So I got my first job in Austin. Congratulations. 2019. All right. Year after I got here. Year after I got here, I was the first, I was the second person to move in this building. Second person okay. to move in all the 51. All the 51. I've seen all my neighbors come and go. There's only a, Two, three, four neighbors still that are still here from the beginning okay. for five years, six years. For the most part, I get along with everybody. I, I still try to mind my own business and just leave <laughs> things alone. I don't. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that outgoing. I will talk. Mm -hmm. I will talk, but I, 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 somewhat reluctant a lot of times. You know. Okay. I feel as if my anything I say may not have a lot of self worth to people. That it's just not, not important to people what I think or what I have to say, because I'm not well educated. I'm not really super well educated. But let's, let's, let's circle back to yeah. what yeah, we sure. were talking about earlier, and yeah. I was saying that I've got a lot to learn from you. <laughs> Do you okay? Know? I've never experienced what you've experienced. No, no. I didn't grow up in Brownwood. I didn't, <laughs> wasn't born in Michigan. Uh, uh, and I've had a, my life has had a totally different arc than yours has. So there's a lot for me to learn from you, yeah. and I've it makes me a little, little uptight when you said something right there. You said, "I'm not sure what I have to say is worth it," or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, because yeah, well. I can learn from you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, Thank you. and it's. Uh, People are probably learn some stuff I don't want to know. But. <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah. You could, you know. You, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that are kind of. Well, you know, we go. talked earlier, and I got you thinking a little bit. You said, "Have you got any questions?" I said, "Well, I've got one." And that question we always like to ask people is, Kelly, what is different about you that you like? What is different about you that's yeah. made a difference yeah. in your life, and that you really yeah. like? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, I think is is it my ability to face adversity. Okay. I, I pretty much learn how to navigate wow. most yeah. anything. You have. I can navigate and find the exit before you know, people don't even know I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. That's 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 one thing I would say. And. There's a special woman in my life that tells me that to keep it simple mm -hmm. and 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 just uh, and I, I I am simple. I'm very simple. I'm very simple person. I'm easy to get along with. People like me a lot for, for reasons that I don't always see. I don't know if I like them or not. They like me. 
just been it's been a hard day of sex. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how old are you, Kelly? 56, turned 56 this 56. month. In March. Okay. Well, actually, last month, now April Fool's. <laughs> April Fool's, all right, yeah. Yeah, March, March was my, my 56th birthday. Okay. So yeah. let me see, my eldest son was born in March, March 12th. March 12th. He was born in 69, so you would have been born in 67? I was born in 68. 68, okay. Yeah. That's right, he just turned 55. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, we're around it, we're right same age. There you yeah. go, yeah. 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 That's something else that's kind of, you know, you know, you're asking what, what, what's, what's different about me. One the thing that's different about me that I face, I have to face quite often, is the fact that I don't have any children. Or a spouse. I see that everywhere, everywhere, everywhere I look. I asked you what's different that you like. Yeah, you? right. <laughs> so I like, yeah. I didn't hear I, I like think, in I think, that. I think I do like that in some oh, way, okay. some regards. Well, it makes though. you independent as hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I do like that. Um, it's just a question is, question uh, is disturbing is that what would have been different had I. Had oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel for I feel for people that are in this day and age they're having to deal with youngsters and and uh, you know spouses and family members you know that um, yeah. Have you met Sally A? Sally A. I'm she lives here. In the building? Yeah, I may know her. I don't know. Red hair. No. She is a she is a digital professional. All right. She does all kind of stuff and she's working for the neighborhood association now doing all the communication. Really? So she posts to stuff. She's Really? Uh, she grew up um, grew up in Puerto Rico. Oh really? So you'll hear her voice. It's it's different than ours. Right. Uh, she didn't grow up in Brownwood, <laughs> uh, yeah. but she's here in the in the okay. department. And yeah. uh, interesting lady. So you mentioned. I'm glad you say that because I, I was going to ask you. Um, as my turn to ask a question. Sure. <laughs> um, from what little you know about me, and what I've just kind of laid out, you know, explained. Where in this neighborhood do I belong other than right here at this moment? I mean, okay. at this second. I mean, is there is there something going on that I should know about or that would interest me that would that would that would that I would be comfortable doing because I don't feel as if that's being offered for for myself or for, for my individualism okay. individualism. I I I how much are you willing to step out? Uh, yeah. So well, the, the that, what I was getting is, to there is limited is working. What is, I was getting to there is the difference between what's being offered to you and what's available to you to go find. Say it again. What's again. being offered to you, oh. or what's available to you to go find? Oh. Okay. There's this interesting group working up in Miller. There's a vision. There's not, there are five cities around the world called blue zones. Mm -hmm. And in those five cities, people regularly live over 100 years old. Oh my. Oh yeah, I, I think I've heard, heard yeah, about that. Yeah, you've probably heard about it. There's yeah. one in Japan, there's one in California, there's and they one eat, in they Greece. Eat some, they eat some really good food. Though. They eat plant-based primarily. You know, yeah. they have some meat, but very little. Mm. Plant-based. But one of the big things about their community, Kelly, is it is community. Yeah. And so one of the one of the people in this community is trying to start some of that up, and it's completely open to everybody. Yeah. Uh, we show up, one thing we do is every Friday night, we're at a different place, and just come together in a, in a very different group. Each time it's a little bit different group, yeah, yeah. you know? But it's a chance to sit and talk at yeah. the end of the week. Right. And people bring their kids and dogs, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so we typically, obviously, we're out on the patio at some place. Yeah. Um, 
and oh, they do is. that kind of thing. And yeah. it's just totally open. And that's the vision of what makes you healthy as you get older, is that's, not being lonely. That's it, yeah. Okay? And I get the feeling that you're lonely. I think I saw oh, yeah. some of that in your writings this week. Yeah. And so part of that is, okay, how do, how do you create that space where you have as much community as you want to have? Yeah. You know, yeah. I am not going to say you got to be there every Friday night, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah. What what do you what does Kelly want? Yeah. You know, um, but you would be perfectly welcome. Oh yeah. At these and they're called right. blue zones. Blue zones. Where they're putting right. it up as blue zones on Facebook and that kind of stuff. Okay. I'll send you a link to the okay. website. Okay. Nice. Um, Interesting. And you know, like last week we met at Witchcraft. Do you know where Witchcraft is? Is that the little bar right there? It's uh, it's over on the park. Yeah, yeah by the park. Yeah, I've been there once. So there's Quacks, Witchcraft, and yeah. Locadoro. Okay. Yeah, so it's Witchcraft. A small we place. met there. I've been uh, there. We met at uh, Halcyon the week before, which is sure Halcyon's is. over by the Paseo. I'm not sure where that one's at. If, if you go up the the walking path, the Paseo with all the trees, okay. it's on the right. Okay. Uh, we've met there, and we've met at different places. Okay. And they're all, but they're all either in Miller or close. You know, we've been over yeah. to Batch. Okay. I don't know if you've seen Batch. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Over oh, the yeah. hill. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's every every Friday night for a couple of hours, and people drop in and drop out. Okay. You know, it's not you got to be there at five thirty. <laughs> no, it's just totally. I wouldn't. And the whole me. vision is yeah. intergenerational community. Okay. So let's get the old people, let's get the young people, let's get everybody in between. That's what we need, yeah. And just, oh, that sounds, just be comfortable. That'd be good. That'd be and good. It's not like you have to do it, it's like it's available. Okay. And that's yeah. what I love about it. It's available. Anybody in the community can yeah. show up. And that's a, that's we a, started that, a, that. Uh, a potluck. Okay. Out in the park. We're going to meet in the park for okay. a potluck. Okay. All right. And, you know, I thought. That's easy. I just brought a bottle of wine. That worked really well. You know, <laughs> I can do that. I don't have to cook anything. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, the interesting thing, thing there was we're getting different religions showing up okay. in there. So we're getting Muslims, we're getting Catholics, we're getting Jews, we're getting Episcopalians. We get you know, yeah. and they're showing up and they're bringing food oh. that is from their culture, okay. which is really cool, yeah. my vision, and it's really neat. Uh, but if you it's look good. at that food, again, we go back and say it's mostly plant-based. Oh, <laughs> a lot okay. of those are plant-based, okay, yeah. you know? So it's, this is going on. So different cultures, they, they tend to eat healthier than Americans, I'm sure. Well, they yeah. don't eat hamburgers very often. <laughs> no, that's what I just had, anyways, if I got it, and then I had, uh, chicken tenders and french fries and gravy and yeah. toast, you know, all that. And, I, and I, that surprisingly uh, is one thing. I, I, from the time I did live over there at um, Red Oak on, on right. Berkman, uh, I had ballooned up to 410 pounds. Kelly! I sat there so depressed and so trying to like keep myself composure about not knowing where I belong, yeah. what I was supposed to do, who my friends were. Everybody, every, every time I stepped out my door, people wanted to ask me for things. You know, they wanted to ask me, do you have a cigarette? Do you have toilet paper? Do you have, I mean, everything under the sun, there was nothing that was not mm -hmm. off limits. They would ask for money, everything. And I finally I got to where I just couldn't answer my door. Uh. I, I, I sat there so depressed, and I had a friend, and I want to mention his name, Darren Shoemaker. He is a Meals on Wheels volunteer. Okay. I met him back in the days when I first was, was first started living there. He came to my house as a Meals on Wheels volunteer with the intent of only taking me shopping twice a month. Okay. Because I was so scared, I was so nervous, I wouldn't leave the house. I, I didn't. I, I was scared. I was. I was. Uh, 
I've had a lot of issues that I tried suppressing and tried bottling it up and tried keeping it private. Mm -hmm. There's no way to do that. You can't, you, that, you can't hide depression. You can't hide your differences. You can't hide these things. They're just there. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate, yeah. So that friend, Darren Shoemaker, he came and got me, and now we're close friends. I've been to his house. He comes over and visits for no, for no reason. He, the, the Meals on Wheels was, uh, the program was called Groceries to Go. Okay. Note that, people, Groceries to Go. What that does is it sends a volunteer to someone, to, to the elderly person or a disabled person that needs to do shopping. They can go shopping either by themselves or that you can, they, they trust you to take your, your, your checkbook or your, your credit card to store for them and get the items you listed. And he, he was he willing to do that. He was willing to take me and go shopping for me. Okay. But he, he said, Kelly, you, you're, you seem like you're, you seem like you're, you're pretty together. Why don't you come with me? Mm -hmm. And every time we got to the grocery store, I got all these nerves and all terrified, got scared. He was Kelly. Now you live by yourself, and obviously you came out here. Yeah. yeah. So I go. I never. I, my, you, my, you shop at HEB? Yeah, I go okay. by myself. Yeah, I go. I go this way. I go to Hancock Center. I go to all the HEBs. I bet the new one out there. To, uh, oh, that's right. You drive for favor. Don't favor. You? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so, an HEB yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah okay. So uh, that's what I. Nothing makes me happier than doing customer service. Okay. I can relate to people and and somehow I bring a smile on people's face. I, yeah. I don't I don't even know I'm doing it, but it happens. So I'm gonna make sure you get in touch with the blue zone yes, sir. thing. Yes, sir. And I like uh, that. See how that works for you. I like that. Uh, Somebody needs to invent something that will cool your cell phone when you have no air conditioning. There are things online, they have little things, that will, little fans you can connect to your phone. Yeah. What I notice is there's nothing that will cool your phone and that you put on your, on your, on your dashboard. On your yeah. dashboard. And so, I've had that problem too, where I put, hung the phone in the, the yeah. windshield <laughs> and the phone says, forget this. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's too we're, hot. In, we're in South Texas. I'm not going to work. <laughs> I'm not going to work. <laughs> I think I was in Laredo. That's making my job very difficult. Yeah, uh, I think I, I was in Laredo and it just checked out and said, yeah, forget it, guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm cooked. <laughs> Literally, cooked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. tough to drive for favor that way, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I can't, I can't get addresses. I can't follow any directions. I got to. I basically can get to any location that pops up where the items are at. Mm -hmm. It's out of memory and knowing Austin well enough. But when it comes to getting the direct to the address for it to be delivered, that's a little more tricky. Yeah. 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 But I do my best and uh, it's part time, you know, with me having uh, disability income and uh, I can make more money and, you know, and Take Care had the idea of one of their um, employee employment specialists had the idea that, you know, Essentially, they want you to outgrow Social Security. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I got too far, way too far too many ailments now to ever try okay. to, to try to outgrow Social if Security. If I remember correctly, you were over at the uh, car wash for a while. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. I remember driving in when he looked up and there's Kelly. So he goes, oh wow, yeah. And he yeah. said, Come on, get, straighten that out. Get in here. You know, yeah. Okay, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I learned, I had a, I, I got a reputation as being rather of a tough guy over there, strict, strict guy, and, but uh, I don't know, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to treat you that way. No, it, it, but I thought yeah, it was, because that, that's important that I do yeah, get it straight, some, get my foot off yeah, the brake. Yeah, there's some yeah. people, when I place for, when I first went over there, is uh, it was the uh, middle of uh, 2019, and uh, I went over there, and the place, I mean, this is back when car washes were, that place was hidden, I man. The cars were wrapped yeah. around a building. And the boss, he says, you see that line? What, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, if I hire you? I said, 
the more the more people you can give me, the more stressful you can get it. That's how I was under pressure. Bring it on. He's like, all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, I had that mentality. Once I learned that I could work and got my GED and uh, learned that I was able to work, I, I didn't want to look back. And I, I, I tell myself, I think to myself, you know what? I really could have, really could have, could have done so much more in my life if I just had followed my education and, and tried harder. And, but there's so many, so many underlying things that, sure. uh, that uh, you couldn't even begin to, uh, you know, to, to, put, put in, to put into words right now. It'd be a whole other couple other segments. But um, for the most part, I really am a smart person. I, uh, I learn well. I, uh, well. You've been using words today. What words? Just the, your vocabulary and the words you use, and you said <laughs> protocol at one point, that kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah, it's, you know, you've got, the, you've got the knowledge, you've got, you've got that. It's not like you're stupid. No, it's stupid. Yeah. But it, uh, yeah, it was interesting to hear you use. Sometimes that. I can. Sometimes I, I, I have, I have uh, some, some words I've used. But you've had, you've had to follow a lot of protocols in your life, haven't you, Kelly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I've had to like stay within the guidelines yeah, of a yeah. lot of things. Yeah. To to stay to stay within what people wanted me to be is yeah. that they that, that I don't know I don't know what my purpose was but something something about me they needed me here I, I have this uh, saying I tell myself and sometimes tell the people is that no matter where I go there I am but also at the same time I'm strategically placed wherever I'm at I'm yeah. always I'm always at the right place at the right time okay I see things that happen just before people get shut eye and I'm seeing them happen so they didn't know what's happening so you know, that to me is like something about me as a as a as a, as a human, as a as, as whatever person that you want to describe me as uh, special. I you are special, <laughs> right? Right. You're you're unique. Right. There's never been another like you. No. Nope. Never be another one. Nope. The other thing we talk about, you know, we have this nonprofit called We Are All One. Okay. And the vision is you are special and unique. You are one, right? Mm -hmm. But you are a necessary part of the whole, Kelly. Oh, yeah, yeah. This wouldn't be the same without you. No. And no. me. Oh, wouldn't you. be the same without Or the next guy. Or those yeah. guys, yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't be the same. So somewhere there's a reason. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. That yeah. Kelly Evans is here. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a reason, yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. yeah. It, it can be some 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 go into religion with that, and other people I I kind of st stay away from religion when if possible, but uh, I have been known yeah. to go to prayer meetings in the church mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. I uh, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just play like you're spiritual. Spiritual, yeah. Okay, that's more because be. There's so many religions, and one of the things in the blue zone is interesting. Here's these five cities separated by thousands sure. of miles. Yeah. Every group in every one of those cities is spiritual, ah. and they're all different. All right. That's what I take away from that. Is right. Spiritual, but it doesn't necessarily make a lot of difference. Which spiritual yeah as long yeah, as you yeah. have some of that well you, you as you i mean educated as, as smart as i've seen some of the stuff you talk about i do know that um uh most religions are are all pretty much based in the same the same found the same general beliefs pretty much most let me, let me see if i can if what my vision of it is, is most religions say much the same thing. Yeah. They say, treat others as you would be treated. Yeah. And you see that, you yeah. know. And, yeah. But at some point, you have to get back to that. Let's take care of each other. Let's treat each other like we would want to be treated. Let's, and all of the religions say something like that. All yeah. the ones I've right. seen anyway. Yeah. And so, okay, that, that begins to make sense to me. Yeah. And I'm just spouting off. Hey, do you know what um, religion them, that 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 uh, 
Buddhism, is that right down there on 51st Street, that new... Um, that's that, that Muslim, I Muslim, think. Muslim, I think it's yeah. Muslim. Yeah. Yeah, I was they rather, just, you know, they, got, they got that place all built up and oh yeah. they had a huge event of some kind. Well, the, the, the imam from that, the leader, mm -hmm. was at one of our potlucks oh, here yeah. in the all neighborhood. Right. Yeah, right, so, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Oh, hey. do you know who your city council member is, Kelly? I'm sorry, I don't, no, sir. It's okay. His <laughs> name is Zo Kadre. It's really okay. Soheb, Soheb, Soheb Kadre. He's a Muslim and he lives here in the community. All right. Isn't that neat? Yeah, it is neat, yeah. <laughs> hey, can I just leave you with this one last note? Yes. I think that we, this is about how long, how long you expect this to go it's on. It's done, yeah. So, um, well, I was working at Speedy Stop. I had a broken foot. I just, my foot just got broken, and just before I had to, you know, leave the, leave the job. I was there, and there was a man there, and he, uh, he was on crutches, and he was inside the store. I had to be inside the store, right? So I tell myself, okay, uh, he's get, I see him gathering all these items, and he's he walks stuff up to the well, walks the stuff up to the grocery. Store. He's got all this stuff. He, he, I don't know what he was, he just needed a lot of stuff: cokes, candy, chips. And he gets up to the counter, and um, turns out we didn't have any bags at the time for the, for the customers. Well, turns out. I had just dug out of the garbage. <laughs> this is this is not anything bad in any way. It, it sounds bad. But it was a big old spray had dumped off a big old stack of H E B, the real good H E B sacks oh, wow. on top of the garbage. So I brought I had some reason I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna take those and put them in our office. Surely there's gonna be somebody who can use those yeah. bags. So he's on crutches and I'm I barely can walk myself. And he says, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to get my stuff to my car. I said, hold on a minute, sir. I let my cell phone to the, to the car walk real fast. I'm going to help this guy out. And I did. I got bags and came to his car. He says, you know, you, you really went out of your way for me. And I didn't know who he was. He says, you come down. I let, I, I, you come down to, uh, it's that little restaurant down there next to Domino's. The uh, the two restaurants are side. The two, one's the chicken wing place. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it starts with an H. I wish I knew the name of it. I, I'm not ruining the okay. story, but anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, he says, come down and get a free meal. I'm like, okay. So I did. Went down there. And he turns out he was the owner of that place. Oh, wow. I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> We're all in this together, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah. And we're all different, and it's special. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Yeah. So that's Kelly Evans, and this is the end of episode 102 of Celebrating Differences, and our subject today was Embracing Differences, and I think Kelly did a great job. See you down the road.